Copilot Agent for SharePoint. It's one of the most powerful features to land all year. I'm gonna show you how to leverage this outside of SharePoint, but instead in Teams. Let's get into it. So here's the scenario we're gonna be creating. A sales team wants quicker access to documents. They're all stored in SharePoint. They, they can navigate into SharePoint, but they'd rather have uh, a conversational way to access those documents and not necessarily have to go into SharePoint to do it. So first, we're gonna be creating this new Copilot agent in SharePoint. Then we're gonna see how that works when they're in Teams. And now if you're not that familiar with Copilot Agent for SharePoint yet, I've got a video showing how all this works, but don't leave yet. This video is showing one of the many reasons why you want to start learning this. So let's just keep on going so you can get just a taste of what this, this agent uh, functionality can do. So I'm in my sales document library uh, with, with a lot of sample service agreements. To create a new Copilot, we're going to just leave everything unselected and just click on create an agent. This will create a Copilot agent on all of these documents. So I'll click on edit because I wanna call this something other than document agent. You should always give it a really, really good name. Don't just accept the default name. So we'll just uh, call this service agreement Copilot. We could give it a new logo or a description in here. But for now, I'm just going to click on save. Now we can close this. And if we refresh this page, we'll see our new Copilot co agent right inside the document library. That's where these things are going to live. They're going to live somewhere in a library. Now, at this point, I can just uh, use this window off to the side to talk to it, just like we've covered in a past video where I walked all through how these things work. This time, we're going to be do taking this into Teams because, again, the sales team doesn't want to have to go into SharePoint. Sure, they can set up a bookmark and, and all that, but you know they live in Teams. They don't live in SharePoint. So this is how these Copilot agents can become a lot more powerful. We're going to click on the three dots next to the Copilot agent, and we're going to click Copy Link. This will copy it into our clipboard, and now I can go into Teams. So I've got a chat set up with a test user. And what I can do is I can paste that link in here. And when I click the send button, it'll give me an option to add that, that Copilot agent to the chat. So I'm gonna click on that. Now it gets added into this Teams chat. Now this will work fine if it's a group chat or just a one-to-one -one type chat like I've got here. But now the Copilot is in the chat. So we've got all the starter prompts here because this is just a regular Copilot agent and it comes with that functionality. I can click on create an FAQ on these resources and I can get a response. It'll work just like it does inside that SharePoint uh, Copilot panel, but now we're getting all those responses in Teams itself. But it gets better than that. So we have the FAQ that was generated, but we can also hit the at symbol, like we're gonna tag a particular person, but we start to type in the name of that Copilot. Now, so you could at mention this, and this will send a message, a regular chat message just to that Copilot. So I can say, where is the Apex, if I could type, service agreement. And so now that's gonna specifically tag that agent with that message and it's gonna give us the response. So we'll wait for that and we got our response and even the reference to that file. So we'll see when it uh, references that document, we see the little footnote indicator here and we can click on this document and go straight in if we want to. So really powerful functionality. And if you're implementing Copilot agents or you plan on doing that, make sure that this is part of your user training. And if you're new to Copilot within SharePoint or you're trying to learn more, I've got a newsletter that'll keep you updated on all these great features. Just click the link below in the description to get signed up. It's free, what more could you ask for? So as you're starting to use Copilot agents in SharePoint, and certainly as your users are starting to do this, you want to be able to train them. You want to give them information on how this, this thing can work. And some of the some of the tricks that like this, 
that you should be incorporating into a training program to make sure that they can get the full power of this and not necessarily have to live in SharePoint all the time anytime they'd want to use those Copilot agents. Now, there's a way to disable these Copilot agents in SharePoint on a site-by-site -site basis. Uh, there's definitely organizations that will be wanting to do this. They will absolutely want to do this. And I'm already working on the video as of the time of this recording. If you want to know when that video goes out or just to keep up with all the latest SharePoint content that I create, then click that like button and subscribe to the channel. So let me know down in the comments what you think of this. Would you use this more in within SharePoint or would you rather use it within Teams? Personally, I think it'd be better to have it in Teams because I've always got Teams up and running. I'm not necessarily on a specific SharePoint site all the time. But I live inside Teams, so it's a really, really cool feature to have available there with different agents added into whatever Teams they apply to so that I can just talk to it whenever I need to. But let me know what you think. And to get started with my Copilot Agents with SharePoint playlist, click or tap the screen and I'll see you over there.